Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to do a real live demonstration of visual memory and elaborative encoding. So if you're ready for the bread and butter of this five part video series, stay tuned. Alright, so what we're going to do today is look at a constellation of syndromes called multiple endocrine neoplasia, or MEN for short. Let's take a short look at uh, the Wikipedia page. Take a look at the definition. So multiple endocrine neoplasia encompasses several different syndromes featuring tumors of endocrine glands. Now, the important part about these group of syndromes for memorizing is that they each have their own characteristic pattern or of presentation. Uh, the tumors show up in different places within the body and it's important to know where they show up because some are benign and some are, some are malignant. Uh, take a look at this page. We've got uh, some histology of medullary thyroid ca cancer that shows up in two of the different syndromes. Uh, we've got some terminology, some history. And if you look down here, you see a table for comparison. You can see where if you just tried to rote memorize this, it would take a long time. It would be very ineffective and inefficient in your studying techniques. Over here, we've got another picture. And uh, once again, you've got words laid out randomly on the, uh, on the page. And you could try to memorize this. But um, as I explained in my book, it's, your brain is designed to memorize people, places, things, and objects. And it does not hold on to... Uh, vocabulary and uh, it does not hold on to words very well at all so when you try to wrote memorize words on uh, the page in locations it just doesn't work out very well it's not nearly as efficient as the visual memory techniques further down here uh, we see that they've actually got a mnemonic on Wikipedia and uh, as I said before mnemonics are just difficult to use because by the time you're done studying for a test You've got so many mnemonics that you're basically just swimming in a word salad of mnemonics, getting them mixed up and can't keep things straight. I always had trouble using mnemonics just because they would get all mixed up. And uh, before I found the visual memory techniques, I was quite lost on how to organize information correctly. But we have some useful information here. As you can see, it's the three different MEN syndromes. There's MEN1, MEN2A, and MEN2B. MEN1 has uh, potential tumors in the pituitary gland, parathyroid glands, and the pancreas, whereas uh, MEN2A has potential problems with medullary thyroid cancer, pheochromocytoma, and uh, cancers in the parathyroid glands. MEN2B also has the medullary thyroid ca carcinoma, but also has the marfanoid habitus, along with uh, pheochromocytoma. Let's take a quick look at the marfanoid habitus, because this is going to be important in factoring into our uh, visual memorization. Marfanoid is a constellation of symptoms that resemble those of Marfan syndrome. And with Marfan syndrome, it's important because there's cardiac abnormalities that you have to watch out for. And as a doctor, it's important to identify people that could potentially have Marfan syndrome. Um, these people have very long limbs, uh, arachnodactyly, which is basically uh, spider fingers, long, long thin fingers, uh, hyperlaxicity, which means hyperreflexivity. And uh, their arm span is greater than the, their height. They have this thing where if they close their thumb across the palm of their hand, that their thumb um, extends quite far beyond the width of their palm. Um, the way that we're going to try to memorize this into our visual memorization is that there's been some debate that Abraham Lincoln actually had uh, Marfan syndrome. So we're going to use Abraham Lincoln, believe it or not, to symbolize the Marfanoid habitus in... MEN type 2B. Okay, let's go to our pictures and review how we're going to organize this information correctly. Let's do a quick overview of the elaborative encoding for these syndromes. MEN1, MEN2A, and MEN2B. And we'll go over each of these in depth. Let's take a look at my visual memorization for MEN1. Here, you will notice a man with a tie. First of all, what is the significance of the tie? 
In my book, I explain the peg system in which the tie represents the number one. This allows me to understand that when I access this visual memorization that I am looking at M E N one because the tie makes me remember that. The next thing that you'll notice is a pit on the man's forehead. Now, this is meant to be a pit of a peach. The important part is that the pit reminds me that the pituitary gland is a site in which tumors may arise in the M E N one syndrome. The next thing that you'll notice is that he's holding a pan across his chest. This serves to remind me of the pancreas in which tumors can also arise in the M E N one syndrome. Finally, you'll notice that there are a bunch of pairs over his thighs. These serve to remind me that the parathyroid glands can also have tumors arise from them in the M E N one syndrome. And zooming out, we can see the whole picture in which I know it is M E N one because of the tie around the man's neck, and that M E N one is the syndrome of pituitary, pancreas, and parathyroid tumors. Let's take a look at M E N two A. The first thing you may notice is that the scene takes place on a boat. Well, for my peg system, two means boat, so I place the scene on a boat for my visual memorization. For the A, I threw in an antelope, and there he is. Moving on over, you'll see metals around the man's neck. These represent medullary thyroid carcinoma, which is a part of M E N two A syndrome. Moving on down, we see pairs again on this guy's thighs, and you guessed it, parathyroid glands produce tumors in this syndrome as well, just like M E N one did. Moving on over, we see some man sitting in a vehicle. Now, I might have some explaining to do on this one. I was shooting for a visual representation of pheochromocytoma, which is the third finding in M E N two A. Now, when I thought of pheo, it reminded me of the word Leo, and Leo reminds me of a character on that '70s show. The character's name was Leo, who was played by Tommy Chong, who's best known for his roles in the Cheech and Chong movies. Now, to represent the syllable chrome, I thought of car. So there you have it, Leo Chrome. Or pheochromocytoma, and now Leo from that '70s show is sitting in a car on a boat, representing pheochromocytoma in my M E N two A visual representation. Funny, maybe educational, yes, helps me remember. And zooming out, we see the whole picture: M E N two A with medullary thyroid carcinoma represented by the metals, parathyroid carcinoma represented by the pairs on the thighs, and pheochromocytoma. Represented by Leo in the car. In this last picture for M E N syndromes, we see M E N two B. I've got a boat to represent the two, and the B, a bear. Moving on over, we see metals around the man's neck to represent medullary thyroid carcinoma, which is also present in M E N two B. Moving on over, we see Leo again in his car for pheochromocytoma. Finally, we move back across the picture to my favorite part in all these pictures: Abraham Lincoln riding on this bear. Now, Abraham Lincoln is representing the marfanoid habitus that you find in M E N two B. This is what I described at the beginning of this video. And zooming out, we see the full visual memorization of M E N two B, which includes medullary thyroid carcinoma, pheochromocytoma, and marfanoid habitus. I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial on visual memorization and elaborative encoding. I encourage you to watch my next video, which is video four out of five of my five-part video series. In that video, I'm going to teach you how to use something called your reticular activation system, which will allow you to pick out the most important material while studying and using the visual memory techniques, so that you will do the best possible on your next exam.